So I have a special uh, request uh, from you right now. In my diocese in Burlington, Vermont, there is a young man that's being ordained right at this very moment. And his name is Scott Gratton. And when I was uh, newly ordained 10 years ago, he was in my parish. And I remember one day the doorbell rang and it was Scott and he was probably 18 at the time. And he said, I really need to talk to you, Father. And so we met and uh, for the first time he acknowledged and he said to me that he felt that God was calling him to be a priest. And so here we are 10 years later, and he's being ordained right now. And so I couldn't be with him this weekend because I'd promised that I'd be here. And then he actually asked me tomorrow to preach his first Mass, and sadly I couldn't do that either for him uh, because I'm here with you, and I'm so glad to be here with you. But I did promise him that we would pray for him. And I'm so glad that his ordination mass and, and our mass right now is at the same time. So we are going to celebrate something very, very beautiful together. We're going to really be united with him in a very special way that our faith really teaches us. So please pray uh, for Scotty right now as he really gives his life over to the church. And what a great, what a great priest he's going to be. So pray for him, please. You know, I, I absolutely fell in love with, our, with the theme for this year. Because when you and I come to realize that when we deal with Jesus, when we deal with God, when we deal with our Catholic faith, there are no limits. We can, we can experience the greatest things in life, the greatest feelings in life. You and I, we can experience all of those and it's going to be massive. And because of our faith, we can experience it without hesitation. And so when we say that God's love is limitless, that God's peace and joy and hope and mercy, all of those things that you and I desire, that it has no end, basically what limitless means, right? It has no end. We have to believe that. We have to believe that with all of our hearts, if we're going to appreciate it, if we're going to embrace it, if you and I are going to profess it, we have to believe it. And it's probably one of the hardest things to believe. And that is because there's so many things in our life that say, you know what, love is really without, not without end. You know, people will come up to you and say they love you one day and then not talk to you the next. Is that a love that is without end? No. People will say that they'll forgive you and then when you, certainly something happens in that relationship, they won't talk to you again. Is that forgiveness without end? No. Then there's turmoil in your life. You know, we all have it. Things aren't perfect. Is that peace without end? No. So the world is constantly telling us that everything that God wants for us is limited. It's limited. But God keeps saying it's limitless. And who are you going to believe? Who are you going to believe? The world? Or God. And there's really something that I think is key, something that you and I have to remember. That when we choose to embrace the limitless love of God, His peace and His healing and His mercy and His joy, everything, when we choose to embrace that, we're either going to live in fear or freedom. All right? This is the most important part of this talk, so don't go to sleep now. Fear or freedom? And if you and I live in fear, we will then believe that everything that God has promised has limits. If we live in fear, because we're not going to believe in God, we're not going to believe in His promises, we're not going to believe in His hope, we're not going to believe in His mercy. So we're going to live in this fear. And how many of us want to live in fear? No one does. 
That's no way to live. That is no way to live. But if we live in freedom, if you and I choose to live in freedom, we will then be able to embrace and welcome all that God is without end. His love. His kindness. His mercy. His hope and His joy. All of those things that you want more than anything else, those do not have a limit. Those are yours without end. But you have to live in freedom. Because when we live in freedom, we open our hearts and we say, okay, God, give me all that I need. You know what I need. You know what I'm going through right now. Give it to me and give me it in abundance. I want my heart to overflow with your mercy, with your hope and your joy. So that when I'm going through difficult moments in my life, I know that they are temporary, but your love is forever. So that when I'm struggling with whatever sin I'm struggling with, this is temporary, but your forgiveness is forever. And when I struggle to understand that somebody has loved me or will love me or will ever love me, your love never ends. It overflows. But you have to live in freedom for that to happen. Fear will cripple. Freedom will let you believe all that God promises. You know, the gospel today, so beautifully given to us, when it says that God has counted every hair on your head, he knows you so well that he knows every hair on your head. Nobody else knows that, but he does. And that's how much he cares about you. That's how much he loves you. That's how much he wants to be with you. That's how much he wants to promise every good thing for you. He knows you. And when we allow ourselves to know God, we are living in freedom, not fear. And when we bring the good, the bad, and the ugly to God, we are not living in fear. We're living in freedom. And then we open ourselves to the limitless things that God has to offer. You know, I'm just going to share something with you just briefly. And, and it's a lesson that I have had to learn all too quickly. Over the last year, doctors have tried to tell me at least twice that I'm going to die. I have an active brain aneurysm. And if you don't know what that is, look it up later. It's kind of boring. But anyways, I've been going through these medical treatments. They work. They don't work. Some days I can barely get out of bed. Some days I'm sicker than a dog. Some days I love life with so much joy. But then there was a point that the doctors basically said there was nothing they could do and we were just going to have to let it kind of work itself out. And it probably wasn't going to work itself out for the better. And I decided at that point that I could live in fear or freedom. And I chose freedom. And I've been fighting. I even fought the doctors. I said, you know what? No, we're going to continue treatments. They've been working. But you've got to fight for that. Because I knew that God and I, we weren't done. God and I were not finished doing what we needed to do. And praise God, I was right. But you're never going to discover the answers unless you take those challenges and those risks. Unless you live in that freedom it's going to offer you new life. It's going to offer you a second chance. It's going to offer you peace and joy and hope that nothing else will give you. That is 
what God offers. So don't give up. Don't give up. Don't deny yourself the very things that God wants for you, namely himself. When you struggle week after week to get to Mass, to receive the Eucharist, and you struggle to get through those doors, is God limited or not? If you believe he is beyond limit, then get through those doors. He'll take care of you. He'll give you what you need. But when we limit that love, we stay home, we stay in bed. When we have fallen and we choose not to seek his forgiveness, that is saying that God is limited. But when we go, we say, Lord, I've made a mistake. That tells us that God is beyond those limits. So you know what? In the end, God has amazing things in store for you. Amazing things in store for you. For every person in this room today, God has an amazing plan, an amazing story. And are you going to let that story unfold? Are you going to let that story be told? Are you going to allow the love and the hope and the joy of God to overflow from your heart? And if that is a yes, then you will leave here believing and trusting, believing and trusting that everything that God wants for you has no end. It has no end. And he will give you whatever you need and give it to you again and again and again and again for the rest of your life. You can live in fear or freedom. But God has an amazing plan for you. And I hope you just simply say yes every day. That's all you can do. That's all I can do. Get out of bed. And with a joyful and an unexpected heart, just say, what do you have for me today? What are you going to give me today that the world can't? That even my best friend can't. What are you going to give me today, God? That nobody else can give me. What are you going to do? And with joy. With joy. He'll give it to you. That's the faith that's limitless. Don't ever give up. God's plan is too great, too big for you just to simply ignore.